All right, the last piece on our motion in three space uh, is to talk about in, in motion with vector valued functions, is to talk about acceleration uh, and looking at its normal and tangential components of that acceleration. So we're dealing with a space curve. We've got an object traveling around a, a curve in space. And uh, at some particular point, uh, we know that it's got some sort of velocity that's moving tangent to the curve. And we've also got uh, an acceleration uh, that we find the acceleration. Maybe we'll say this is the acceleration. But um, a lot of times it's nice to uh, take that acceleration vector and break it into two components. One component that's going um, tangent to the circle and one component that's going perpendicular to the circle. So the acceleration that's going tangential um, is the acceleration that's sort of pulling you down that curve that's trying to make you go faster. And then the uh, normal component is acceleration that's pulling you, changing your direction. It's forcing you to curve away from going in a straight line. And a lot of times uh, with a particular curve, it's nice to know uh, when you have position as a function of time, you know, what is that breakdown? If that acceleration, how much of that acceleration is trying to make you go faster down the curve, and how much of that acceleration is pulling you in towards the, towards the center, <coughs> um, excuse me, making you curve away. And so uh, what we want to look at there is you've got your R of T, uh, gives you your position and of course r prime of t uh, still gives us the velocity and r double prime of t is our acceleration and so what we want to do is we want to look at that uh, sort of thing and if uh, what we're looking for in terms of uh, the tangential component of, uh, of acceleration um, the tangential component will just be the the vector projection of A onto t or onto our t vector. It's the vector projection uh, of a onto our t vector. And um, we can do that with just a regular plain old vector projection. We talked about those earlier. Um, that uh, to get the projector, the vector projection, um, and a lot of times we'll talk about it being a little a subscript t, which is a scalar multiplied by our unit tangent vector, um, which is the, uh, uh, you know, a, a unit vector pointing in the direction of, of the tangent, and then we're looking at the scalar as changing that length of that the piece, making it the appropriate size. <coughs> and if we were doing a projection of A onto T, um, it was just A dotted with T, Uh, over the magnitude of t uh, times the vector t, uh, and that is the regular multiplication. Oh, vect magnitude of t squared was the vector projection of a onto t. All right, uh, that's a little bit messy, <coughs> um, but uh, we can kind of clean that up a little bit uh, because we know that um, uh, we, can, we can shorten some of that because we know how to calculate each of those things. We know that t, we had a nice formula for finding t, is uh, r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. That gave us our unit tangent vector. Oh, and actually up here we know that uh, our uh, magnitude of our unit tangent vector is 1, so uh, I'm looking at a dotted with t times the vector t. 
So the first thing here is a dot product of a dotted with t. But t, I know, is r prime over r. So uh, a dotted with uh, uh, r prime of t divided by the magnitude of t of r prime multiplied by the vector t will give our unit tangent vector. So our, our tangential component, if you're looking at it just in terms of a scalar, it's going to be a dot r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. Or your acceleration vector dotted with your velocity vector divided by the magnitude of your velocity vector. Uh, will give you your tangential component of your acceleration. All right, so that's how I define that one. Uh, and then your normal component of um, acceleration uh, would be, well, there's a couple different ways to find it. Uh, but actually, the way I find most convenient is uh, I know that if you've got your acceleration vector here, and you've got some sort of tangential component that you know here, and the magnitude of that tangential component um, is your little a subscript t. And what I want to find is a sub n, which is the magnitude of your tangential component. That makes a little right triangle if you look at the lengths of those, that we know that um, a sub t squared plus a sub n squared is equal to the magnitude of a squared. And so um, a sub n would be the square root of the magnitude of your acceleration vector minus um, your tangential component of acceleration oops, squared minus uh, whatever you came up for your tangential component squared. And then take the square root of that whole thing to get your normal component. Um, I found that's the easiest way to do it. It's not the only way to do it, uh, but that's a pretty easy way uh, I found to do it. However, the more conventional way to find a sub n uh, is to do the magnitude of the cross product of a cross v uh, divided by the magnitude of your v your velocity vector. Or you also see this as r double prime of t cross r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. Uh, that's the more conventional way to do it. Uh, but I, I personally kind of prefer to do the, the Pythagorean theorem. Um, it's a kind of a quick, easy way to do it. All right, uh, I've got to post a got a couple other videos to post that actually show the process of finding these values um, and so we will post those uh, and uh, again if you have any questions post in the homework forums and we will do what we can to answer them.